Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies at Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. <laughs> hey, gang, here's some breaking news. Will Smith really wants an Oscar. Like, really, really bad. It seems like every Christmas season, we get some prestige drama that is nothing but a thinly veiled attempt by Will Smith to finally get that trophy after two nominations. The best of these was Pursuit of Happiness, unless you want to count I Am Legend in there, which was a Christmas release and in which he did cry while staring off into the middle distance. But the worst of these? Oh, it doesn't matter anymore because Collateral Beauty has taken that top spot for all time. Because God help us if we ever get another Will Smith Oscar baiting film this repugnant again. God help us. God help us, I say! In Collateral Beauty, Smith has selected a grab bag of Oscar winners and nominees like Kate Winslet, Edward Norton, Helen Mirren, and Keira Knightley as if that would help his cause. It does not. Instead, it's just embarrassing for all involved. The trouble starts early, when you realize mere minutes into the film that the movie you're getting is not the movie you were sold in the trailers. Will Smith plays Howard, a successful businessman grieving over the loss of his daughter to illness who begins writing letters to ideas, you know, uh, constructs, time, love, and death. The very three things that he preaches to his employees of his company as driving factors in marketing to people. We long for love, we wish we had more time, and we fear death. Then one day, he receives one visit apiece from a person claiming to be one of those intangible things, embodied and ready to respond. Is he going crazy? Having a supernatural moment? Okay, okay, look, I'm gonna get into the plot here because I need to, but let me say that what follows is not a spoiler. Not, not, not a spoiler, because it happens ten minutes into the darn movie, okay? And you shouldn't see this movie anyway, but just in case you were planning to, I have to let you know that the marketing is selling one thing while the actual movie is something else entirely. These people who start talking to him, led by Helen Mirren as Death, are actors in an amateur theater troupe that have been found and hired by a group of Howard's business partners, so that Howard will sell his company for a massive profit and make all of them rich. Whee! You see, Howard's grief has been, you know, a major bummer, and in his despondency, all of the clients are leaving, and the offer may not be this good again, and all three of them need money for various reasons, so, you know, if Howard would just, like, get over the death of his daughter already, that would really be awesome, okay? Now, look how it's presented in the trailer. Howard is a brilliant, creative, charismatic guy. He used to love life. Right now, he hates it. I try to talk to him, I try to reach him, and he's not there. I miss him. Yeah, it really seems like his group of colleagues is doing all of this because they care so much about him, doesn't it? The entire central premise of the film is far more cruel, and it asks us to root for the selfish interests of some unscrupulous rich people. And that's just the setup! This film isn't even done with the sophomoric philosophy or lame audience manipulations which are telegraphed entirely. It's no coincidence that, for example, Edward Norton spends most of his time coaching love on what to say to Howard when he himself has been given a tremulous relationship with an estranged daughter. Or that Kate Winslet only interacts with the actor hired to personify time when she is feeling the ticking of her biological clock. And Michael Peña keeps hanging out with Helen Mirren and boy, he, <coughs> he, <coughs> he really seems to be <coughs> coughing a lot. Hmm, say, isn't that a massive coincidence that the three things that... Ah, I can't even finish. I haven't even gotten into the third act with its multiple Shyamalan-esque shifts on perspective that are meant to be revelatory but do not hold up under scrutiny, reek of cheap manipulation, and signify the movie's attempt to have it both ways. No, it wants to have it all the ways. And then there's the sloppy writing, the obvious symbolism of precariously stacked dominoes, the gibberish spouted by the guy trying to make time into an actual character. Seriously, the guy in Alice Through the Looking Glass made way more sense. And the repeated attempts to make the phrase collateral beauty into something. You know, something that sounds like wisdom. Look, the litmus test for comedies is, did it make me laugh? But the same doesn't apply for dramas. Bad movies can wring tears from you, cheap tears, when they manipulate you with something easy like killing a dog or showing a child losing their parent. So I'll admit I did cry at Collateral Beauty, and I hated the movie for making me cry because it did not deserve my tears. It didn't earn them. Dead children are simply a sad thing, and this movie has a dead child. But Collateral Beauty has the misfortune of coming out around the same time as Arrival and Manchester by the Sea, which both also deal with unimaginable grief, but take far more subtle and realistic approaches to depicting it. What was it I said about Casey Affleck's performance? Oh, it seems like it was only yesterday of Casey Affleck, who turns in the performance of his career so far. Like all of the other performances in this film, it's not an extreme, histrionic, out there, oh, give me an Oscar because I'm shouting and gesticulating wildly kind of performance. And what do we get in Collateral Beauty to depict grief? I saw you in her eyes when she called me daddy and you betrayed me. 
between Casey Affleck and Will Smith, guess who's probably gonna win the Oscar this year? Ooh, that's gotta tear Will Smith up inside. So close. As for collateral beauty, it's smug, cheap, and absolutely shameless in the way that it panders and manipulates. It's an insult to your intelligence and an affront to cinema in general that left me alternating between shaking my fist at the screen and shaking my head as I left the theater. Empty bag of popcorn for this irredeemable abomination. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on collateral beauty, especially if you can explain to me what exactly what that phrase is supposed to mean. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. And after seeing this film, I am reaching out to the cosmos for answers. Ugh.